This has been one of the best-selling DIY subwoofers on the market, and for good reason. It's extremely versatile. You want to use this infinite baffle? No problem. Sealed? Well, you can do that. Ported below 20 hertz? You better believe it. Which is why it's no surprise to me that everyone I know that uses this subwoofer absolutely loves it. But you know what they say, change is inevitable. And change they did. Dayton Audio came out with a new version of their beloved Ultimax subwoofer that has promised to handle more power, be more efficient, while still being just as versatile. How did they do it? And did they do it? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see if it's just as good or better than the old Ultimax that we have all grown to love. This is the Ultimax 218, and as you can clearly see, it looks almost identical to the last Ultimax. So we know at least they liked the look. And why shouldn't they? When I unboxed this thing, I was in awe. It really is an incredible looking and well-built driver. But those with keen eyes will notice some differences, such as they use a different basket and magnet setup. What you won't see are the internal differences. Thankfully, Dade was gracious enough to share those details on those changes, and after talking with them, it is clear they believe those changes make this an even better version of the beloved Ultimax. For example, this new 18-inch Ultimax has a very generous X-Max of plus or minus 28 millimeters, which is up from 22 millimeters they had on the old version. For those of us in the US, that is over two inches of travel. And that is extremely important when you want to move a lot of air to get that chest pounding, breathtaking bass. The problem is when you move that much air, it's very easy for things to go awry. The subwoofer can start losing its linearity as it's traveling up and down, uh, causing noises and smells that let you know that your subwoofer, well, they aren't happy. Now, Dayton didn't want that, so they made some specific engineering choices that you might not even notice that keeps this driver extremely linear and clean, all while increasing the power it can handle up to 1200 watts continuous and 2400 watts peak. What magic did they cast in order to make this possible? Well, you may notice that they use a woven carbon fiber cone. Not really magic, but it does look like it could be found in a Fast and the Furious movie. This cone was purposefully designed with that carbon fiber to be lightweight and rigid, making it able to reproduce accurate sound quickly and detailed, which is extremely important when you really care about the sound quality that's coming from your subwoofer but they also indexed the cone to allow for a smooth transition to the high roll surround. This in turn allows for extra rigidity that is needed to keep that subwoofer linear at that higher power output. Additionally, by indexing the cone, they allow for more surface area, which as we know, the more surface area you have, the more air you can move. But that's not all they did. If we take a look under the cone, Dayton Audio made some more changes that well, you can see and well, some you can't see. They do have a dual two ohm voice coils that can be wired either to four ohm or one ohm final impedance, but they took an extra step to stitch those to the spider. This means that when that subwoofer is really pushing that bass, you don't have to worry about those leads slapping against the backside of the cone. Now that is fairly easy to see. What isn't easy to see? Well, that spider, it's actually a dual spider setup. Now, I know what you're thinking. They used dual spiders in the first Ultimax. Well, that's true. But the first version, they used them right on top of each other. They no longer do that. Now they put a spacer between the two spiders. Now, they found out that by adding the spicer, it helped keep everything more linear, which is exactly what they were going for. Brian Myers from Dayton Audio explained it to me this way. Visualize for a minute that uh, your hands are the spiders on the subwoofer. Now, if you take a baseball bat and you put it in both your hands uh, right next to each other, it's really easy to push that bat uh, side to side or to get out of the gap or lose the linearity. But if you take that same baseball bat and you put one hand low and one hand higher, it's now harder to get that out of the gap. Now, this same principle is what was applied to their new spider system to help keep it linear. Something else you won't be able to see is that Dayton uses a flat ribbon cable for the voice coil. Now, by doing this, it provides more L for the driver. And on the back side, they use a black aluminum former. Now, this former helps dissipate up to 15% more heat by pulling it away from the voice coil. This is one of the main reasons they are now able to handle more power. 
Now the final thing that I think that is important to note is that they used a large aluminum shortening cap. This allows them to keep the inductance linear while cutting down on distortion. All of this were added to make the Ultimax sound better, be louder, and more efficient. But were they able to accomplish this? Well, sort of. I guess it really depends on the bass that you're chasing and how you're obtaining that bass. And you know what, let, let me just explain it to you. The easiest way to illustrate this is by modeling them. Uh, for this illustration, I'm gonna be showing the Ultimax 2 in red and the original Ultimax in blue. Both are going to be in a sealed box with the same cue. This is where things get interesting. The Ultimax 2 does indeed provide about two decibels more SPL in the same cue box with both drivers maximum continuous power. That is until about 50 hertz. After that, they start to converge and by 20 hertz, you aren't getting any benefit of that higher sensitivity. That means that if you're going to be using this for home theater and allow room gain to help bring up that low end, uh, both these will have really similar output below 30 hertz. And if you're DSPing the higher frequencies down to match the lower frequencies, well, you're not gonna get any benefit of that added sensitivity. And that isn't really the end of it either. To get the same Q box, the new Ultimax has to utilize oh, a bigger box. When you put them both in the same knockdown cabinet that Parts Express has to offer, the original Ultimax actually outperforms it on the low end. Although admittedly, this is only about a one decibel difference. Now you can increase the size of the sealed box of the Ultimax 2 to get more low end performance, but you could also do that with the original Ultimax, meaning the original outperforms the new Ultimax in low end frequency in the same size box. However, remember when we said the new Ultimax has, well, more XMAX? Well, that can come to play in the form of DSP. Since you have more XMAX to play with, the new Ultimax does allow for more DSP on the low end. If you put the Ultimax 2 in the bigger box and DSP it, you could get up to a two decibel increase all the way down to 20 Hertz before having excursion issues. And for those that are wondering, the same principles are true of this subwoofer in a ported design as well. Now the improvements State and Audio did to the Ultimax were well thought out and planned to get you what I consider is, well, still the best, most versatile subwoofer you could use for DIY. And a subwoofer that I highly recommend you get. Now this is Toyd, I'm out.